Welcome back to the Velotour. We are in Strada Bianca, around 102 kilometers to go. And this group of four has gone up the road, started by this man, Jens Voigt, the Adidas team. We've also got Andre Daragod, Marshall Guyon, and Thomas Vogler. We're picking it up so far from the finish today because this group is coming up from behind. Quite dangerous group, including Eddie Plonkhart, Rudy Altig, Rudy Donnens, George Hincapi, Silvan Chavanel, Andre Amador, Roberto Conti, and Jan Adriansons. So a very strong group of eight coming up from behind, including two from the Leftovers, which is the team of the Undrafted Riders. Good to see them in the action. Behind the race the Peloton, they are still all together. The Strada Bianca, a very interesting race with these long gravel sections. In this game, it is counted as a one-star difficulty cobblestone sector, so the cobblestone attribute should be very important today. Expect the likes of Jan Ross, Mark Matteo, and Gianluca Bortolami to be among the main protagonists. There's also a real sting in a tail right at the end, it might be hard to see on the profile right now, but it is a very steep cobble climb, it starts around 2.5 kilometers from the finish, and the first one over the top of that very likely to win the race. Bianchi Campagnola doing the work in the peloton. They have missed out on this breakaway, so they'll have to chase. That was Knut Knudsen on the front. Bianchi Campagnola is the team of Gianluca Bortolami, who should be the team leader today. But they've also got Kenny Kuiper and Stan Ockers, two suitable contenders in their own right. So they are probably the strongest team today. Should be able to dominate the race. head on to this long winding gravel sector. Pretty spectacular scenery. This race occurs in the countryside of Tuscany, finishing in the ancient town of Siena. There's Sylvain Chavanel. Chavanel's in a really good spot here. If he can stay off the front towards the sharp end of the race, he could end up with a top 10 finish. He's that sort of rider. He loves these long breakaways. And there's Rudy Altig. The much valued number two pick. Another rider who, if he let go off the front, he could do an awful lot of damage. So off the gravel they go. Good to see some vegetation and spectators today. Apologies for the lack of scenery and other visual aesthetics for the arm loop. Speaking of the arm loop. The winner of that race, Jan Ross, he is also in this race and should be among the favorites as well. We'll have to see how he handles the climbs, especially the steeper ones, but you certainly can't count him out. It's our first glimpse of Marco Pantani this season and Pedro Delgado. The climbers, they don't like these gravel sections very much and I think they'll finish a long way down today. The others shut off the back of the main group, which means the pace has gone up a bit. And look at Knudsen, he is going all out on the front, trying to keep this gap in check. The gap to the 12 leaders around 1 minute 50 seconds. Still very much in reach. But in a one day classic like this, that is a significant gap to such a strong group of riders. We're on a fairly flat section right now for the next major gravel sector. Just as a reminder, each team consists of 10 riders. Each rider is allowed to start 8 of the 11 one day classics and 3 of the 4 tours, so you won't see every rider in every race, but they'll be in most of them. Someone like Stan Ockers, Julian Alphilippe, Certainly could score points in every race, so we put a minor restriction just to keep things interesting for everybody else. Leaders, they've made their way onto the gravel sector. There's still around 70 kilometers to go, but this is the point in Strada Bianca where the attacks start to come, especially from the big leaders back in the peloton. I wouldn't be surprised to see a move coming from pretty far out because in this race, it tends to really explode. So many attacks in this grueling course with all these gravel sectors. 
There's Evian making their presence known. They do have a man in the breakaway, that's Jan Adriansen, so they don't really have to chase. The onus is certainly on Bianchi Campagnolo to do the work. And Knudsen, he's looking a bit ragged. I think he'll peel off the front sooner than later. It's Roger de Kock. He comes towards the front. There's Conti, he's dropped. The man from the leftovers can't hold the wheel any longer. He's the first of the 12 to go. Good to see the big sprinter Andre Dargaud in this move. Sprinter's not usually known for getting breaks like this as we catch a bumpy ride aboard the motorbike. It's always fun to see the big sprinters mix it up, get up the road with some different types of riders to contend with. Fiat, Kelmate, and Blackberry. Each of those teams have two riders in this group, so they're well set up for the later stages of the race. Here's Pascal Richard, a very explosive rider. And Andy Schleck, who's the top climber for Team Evion. You'll see him a lot in the stage races later on. In the last 100 kilometers of racing, taking your toll as a whole slew of riders getting shut out the back including Iran and Knudsen, who've done a fair amount of work today. Andy Schleck's brother Frank, he's also dropped. There's Henny Kuiper, a bit of a dark horse today. He should be the chief domestique throughout the season for Team Bianchi Campagnolo. Stan Acker should be the man in the stage races for them. And of course, they got Portolami and Ockers in the one-day classics. But Henny Kuiper, he's really the glue of that team, I believe. And we'll see him doing a lot of work and perhaps getting results for himself this year. Twenty-five riders in the peloton. They're one minute forty seconds down on this group of attackers as we head to the next crowd sector. This one, 11.4 kilometers long. Fairly rolling to lane with a pretty sharp climb in the middle. It's a bit of a recap for the early stages of the race that you didn't get to see. It was Yin's point who started the move. He attacked alone about 40 kilometers into the race. He was joined by Daragod and this man, Thomas Vokler. And then Marshall Guyon and the other eight eventually made their way across. The cock seems to have turned up the tempo for Bianchi. Latching onto the back of this group now, this is Tommy Prem of the Blackberry team. Blackberry, they'll be working for Julian Alaphilippe, who I presume is in this group, and of course they have Sylvain Chabanel up the road. He might be a bit better suited for a race like this. Blackberry very well positioned, with perhaps their strongest rider out in front. This is that steep climb I was talking about. This is one of the Zulu kingdoms. He is dropped. And it's Akers who comes to the front, so this makes it clear that Bianchi is working for Gianluca Bortolami. Akers is playing a support role this time around, and a very strong ally. For his Italian leader. And that's an attack. Is this Bortolami? It is Gianluca Bortolami, so he has started the hostilities from a long way out. Let's see what the reaction is from behind. This is a serious attack by Bortolami. He's put a lot into this. It's one of the Evian riders giving chase. That's Gilbert Duclo Lazal. Another contender for today along with his teammate, Mark Matteo. But Bortolami, trying to put everybody else in difficulty. Here's the breakaway up front, is starting to break up a bit. A few riders just hanging off the back, so it's all falling apart. The, rider, the riders just spread all over the place at the moment. So we'll see how it regroups over the next few kilometers. Here's Donnens of Team Kelmes, the one applying the pressure at the very front of the race. Both Blackberry riders still with him. 
one of the Fiat men, it's probably Hincapi it is. Voigt, Plunkhart, Daragod, Altig, and Vogler. They are the eight survivors. Duke Lazelle and Bordelami attacking from the main group of favorites, which is split up at the moment. And these two should make contact. Two very strong riders in these cobbled classics. And that's a very serious move gone up the road with the addition of those two favorites. Let's see what their reaction is. I believe that's Lavi Claire. It is, that's Felician Vervaca, the Belgian. I wonder who that team might be working for. Cyril Guimar probably dropped by now. Perhaps Jerry Kanideman is still in this group. And I actually, I believe that's Dargot from the early attack. He must be the man still there for Lobby Claire. There's Jan Ross. A bit surprised he didn't try to follow the attack of Bortolami. Jens Voigt still happy to do work at the front. He's the man who started all the attacking way back at the start of the race. Still looking quite good. There's Mark Matteo. One of the strong contenders. Not quite as much of a powerhouse on the flat as some of his classics rivals. But he makes up for that with unusual climbing ability for a man of the northern races. He truly is a good all-rounder. So here we are around 28 kilometers to go. Still a few more obstacles in the way between here and the finish. Things have regrouped at the front. 22 riders. Stan Ockers leading the way for Bianchi. Is this an attack? I think it's Hank Happy again. It is going to be Hank Happy, one of the big animators in the early part of the season. Bortolami's gone with him, so is Eddie Plonkart. Eddie Plonkart, he is not a good climber, and I'm a bit surprised he's still at the sharp end of this race. There he is, following the attack of Hank Happy onto the next cobbled sector. It's a bit of a sharp climb here. This is Philippe Gilbert of Adidas doing some work. He looks a bit ragged though. I wonder who else from that team is still in this group. Tuku Lozao interested in chasing this down. Actually this is an attack. It hasn't done much to split up the riders but I don't see any Fiat jerseys. I think Ross has been dropped. He has along with Hincapi. That's Hushov, excuse me. Rushov having a good day out as well. He's not really known for succeeding on hilly terrain. Kalme are launching another move. It's Rudy Donnan. He's one of the early attackers. He's part of that group of 12. He still has a teammate Rudy Altig behind. But to send a man up the road at this point in the race is good tactics. Fons de Wolf of La Vie Claire, that must be the man, their leader for this race. Fiat Rider has gone with him. And a Bianchi rider, I'm pretty sure that's Bordolami. It is. A Bordolami, very, very aggressive in this Strata Bianca. Donnan still applying the pressure. Group of seven is formed. I don't see the Evian riders. They are both in this chasing group, which also has seven. So Duke Lalazal has waited for Mattiella. We're going to try and do this together. Three Calme riders in this chase group. Presume Rudy Altig is one of them. Matteo Trenton is there as well. Bortolami finally looking a bit tired, but this is the point of the race where everybody's a bit tired. It appears a lot of these riders are very equal on ability today. That must be Chavanel from Blackberry. He's still there, looking pretty good. Dargod is still here. Chapeau to him. I wouldn't expect him to be here. These riders just giving everything they have. Just on 10 kilometers to go, a group of it seems things have come back together. So 12 to 14 riders, a few are yo-yoing, including this man, Jan Ross. Now this climb towards the finish is very steep, but the road is very narrow. It's not meant for a large group like this. So whoever hits the front of that climb 
first has a really good chance of being the first over the top. It's not the sort of climb where you can get around people and surprise with an attack from behind. Surely there'll be a fight for control of this bunch as they approach the finish. 7Ks to go. It's probably Duke who was out at the front for Evian. Bortolami, he was really a man to watch out for on this final climb. But the pace has slowed, and there's a group of six coming up from behind, and I think they could rejoin this group. And that would really complicate things right towards the end of this race. There's Altig. He could certainly win if he gets to the bottom in good position. Both Evian riders still there. And here come the Bianchi boys from behind. This is probably Henny Kuiper and Stan Ockers. So they're going to help Portolami get in position. See them both coming up towards the front. Now this is the finale of the race. They turn left onto this cobble climb and it's Bianchi in control. Three riders right at the front. Bortolami leading the way. Getting to the steep part. And there's the acceleration by Bortolami and there's no answer for it. This will be your winner of Strada Bianca. They've done exactly what they had to do at the bottom of the final climb and Bortolami first man on it, he launches the attack, no one can follow, and he will win. Chavanel is second from the early break, the Wolf third, Mac Mark Matteo is fourth, and then Stan Ockers will round out the top five. So brilliant race for Gianluca Bortolami, he was a part of so many attacks, but in the end he had enough left in the tank to launch the decisive acceleration right towards the finish. The rest of the top 20 rolls in. And Bianchi Capagnolo have a stellar race, three of the top six riders, so they will score an awful lot of points. Surely they'll be in first place overall once the points have been tallied. So the stragglers continue to make their way towards the finish. Now to see who's going to finish last today. Probably one of the early dropped riders. Marco Pantani, he'll bring up the rear this time. So that was Strada Bianca, chaotic race. Very unusual for such a large group to make it right to the finish like that, but it's Portolami who's gone away from them all. Brilliant result for Silva and Chabonel to get second place for Blackberry. Much needed points for them. Fons de Wolf third, then Matteo Ockers, Henny Kuiper in sixth for Bianchi, Andre Dargod, great day out for Lavi Claire in seventh, Tor Hushov, another brilliant ride in eighth, Rudy Don in ninth from the early attack, Duke Lazal tenth, then Jobert, Hincapi, Altig, Ross, Trenton, and Jens Voigt. The band has started all the moves. He will round out the top 16. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time for Milano San Remo.